radio. It's really confusing because there's two mice here. And it's like, which one does which go to which something? I don't know. Anyways, today has been a fun day. And I often make lots of promises that I don't ever keep on the show. So I won't start now. Just kidding. The big ones I try and keep, but let's get to the pressing issue of the day. <laughs> Greenbow. You see, when iPhone users enter group chat, what was previously blue bubble ends up green bubble for everyone. All the interactions in our self-contained ecosystems, reactions, etc., are now disrupted. Instead of one notification of so-and-so laughed or questioned your comment, now there are a thousand text messages for every little interaction. Plus, the aesthetics of everything is ruined. I've noticed strict party lines amongst Android and Apple users. Some declaring they will never use Android, while others declaring they will never use Apple. Which side do you fall on? More on this breaking story as it continues to develop. <sighs> okay, Tuesday. Going back a little bit. You know, it's a breaking story, so keep following along. Tuesday, so while meeting with one of my favorite people, Hillary, she commented that I live a very magical life. Yesterday, while on a writer's group call at the shop laying in the bed, I had another person say it's a wonderful life I live. And at one point, I think it was two or three years ago, at the Critical Crop Top show, I whipped off this ring and proposed to Catherine Blanford and she asked who are you laughing and joking but it's just like who does that I don't know anyways Eddie and I often like to comment who lives like this <laughs> my life simply feels magical I don't know what I did to deserve a life like this but I'm very content look my standard poodle dogs are amazing and while technically they're called party colored I like to call them panda dogs I have a studio in my backyard in addition to a studio at the shop if my agent would ever send me more auditions, <laughs> I'd have the perfect life for taking said auditions and acting job. And I'm going to eat something if, agent, you're actually watching. I work at my family's blue business at the print shop, which features a chandelier just because Eddie wanted to make the place feel more homier. And the print shop is our second home. It feels like our Downton Abbey. And at the beginning of this year, it was like, will Downton make it? Someone asked me how many DRs I have, and I honestly don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> Who does that? All of this to say, I'm just incredibly grateful. Things, life could be much different. I try and not take it for granted. I mean, I didn't expect the life I have in my wildest dreams, and I keep thinking, what else can I envision? And then life just makes it happen somehow. I don't know. It's quite amazing and also kind of confusing. It's like a box or a table. A table, if you will, like in that video where you put stuff on it and then they it just magically disappears we all know that table doesn't exist someone works very hard to keep that table clean anyways and the thing is i like to think eddie and i live a fairly modest it's a two-bedroom one-bathroom house we live in and my brother live, lives with us for the now which is just the best thing ever i'm honestly going to be so sad when he moves out i love living with my baby brother i don't know if this is just being boastful or just overcome with gratitude perhaps a bit of both who knows but all of that to say, I just really love life right now. Like it feels hopeful and optimistic and full of promise in spite of a worldwide pandemic. With our country and multiple other countries going through revolutions of sort, including Nigeria, and if you're not following along, you should be following along. Um, and yet, with everything that's going on in the world and the way that life seems to be unfolding for me, I get distracted very easily. You s let me... Let me just go back and fulfill a promise I made at the beginning of the show. No, not the start of this actual show, but the beginning of the series. You see, one of my favorite storylines in all of cinema is that of Evie and V for Vendetta. And since Wikipedia did a better job of summarization, I'll just read what was written there. So, so and so's home is sat so and so satirizes the government on the show, and Evie's staying with them, and then his home is raided, and then Evie is captured, played by Natalie Portman. Evie is tortured for information about V, the anti-hero in V for Vendetta, her only solace being a note written by Valerie Page, a prisoner who was tortured and killed for being lesbian. Evie is set to be executed unless she reveals V locations, which she doesn't know. When she says she would rather die, she is released, finding herself in V's home. V stays her imprisonment to free her from her fears. The note was real, passed from Valerie to V when he was imprisoned. While 
Evie initially hates V for what he did to her. She realizes she is a stronger person. Look, the past four years have felt like torture. Politically, first as a black gay male in America, and then as a black queer trans female, there have been so many fears and panic attacks along the way. <laughs> Never mind throwing into the mix, deciding to transition and say, in spite of all of that, I have to live my truth. It's not just the past four years that have made me stronger, but since I turned 18. I remember thinking from the time I entered middle school until I graduated high school, I've not had to face anything in life. My grandparents were all alive. I just never been tested in any sort of way. My Uncle John di did die in 96 when I was 10 years old, but I had just met him once in my life. I was scared, nevertheless, when I graduated high school. Nature abhors a vacuum. So my thinking went, and it just felt very foreboding, as though a hero's journey was underway. Look, I'd seen enough movies to know the basic storylines, even if I couldn't put it into words. Sure enough, starting with my 18th birthday, it seemed all of the trials began. All of them. All at once. Maybe, I don't know. Not all at once, but kind of. The past 17 years have been a lot. I mean, a lot. There was a moment when I and so many of my close friends didn't think that I'd be here. There was a two-year period in my life. I'm somehow shocked I managed to survive the resulting partying. I've had so many encounters with my shadow self and learned so much about myself and then entered a relationship and started the process of getting to know myself all over again. Like, I've been to the underworld, the dark side, like Orpheus, like Heracles, like so many before, and I've returned with a golden fleece. Forgive me, as I really don't know my Greek stories and really just using a lot of generalities here. They all sound pretty, but I digress. I guess, what am I blathering about? I feel gratitude. Like, Evie and V for Vendetta, I am a much stronger person than I was 17 years ago. And I am so grateful for all the seemingly, ma for the seemingly magical life I have, where there just, it feels like there's abundance. My backyard feels like a spiritual sanctuary and the Garden of Eden, and I have my own freaking cottage here. What? Things are just provided, and somehow Eddie and I find a way to make happen what we want to happen. Also, Eddie and I feel like there's a spiritual nexus of sorts here, whether we created it or somehow it was just always here. But it just, it, Constance Corner feels very healing, and when I need to be healed, I love coming home. I'm grateful for the life that Eddie and I have crafted. And... I just feel grateful these days. And maybe it's because, Claire and I were talking about this yesterday, but maybe it's because Mercury is in retrograde again, but in Scorpio. And we just entered Scorpio season, and you know who's a Scorpio? Moi. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but for the past seven days, I just felt like I've been riding a natural high, and it feels amazing, and we'll just see where it goes. So, that's enough of me blathering on. What are you grateful for in your life? I remember I asked this next question and so many people are like well, that's so rude but what have you overcome and how far have you come i love 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 stories like these and i love reminding others how far they've come mainly because i love reminding myself how far i've come and if you feel brave enough and safe enough i always love to hear them send me a message send me a video send me whatever as always keep bearing the lights of being I love you all, and until next time. And don't forget, next Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday, come join us on Mass, Clarinda and I, as we have on as our guest, actor and TikTok superstar, <laughs> Spencer Mumford. Um, he's amazing. He agreed to be in my reading for The Waltz, and I'm really hoping that he'll agree to be in the feature film of it if we can ever find $300,000 just lying around. So tag some celebrities and say, hey, let's make a film. Um, but yes, come join us next week as we have on as guest Spencer Mumford. There is a squirrel shaking its tail outside my window. That's not neither here nor there. But anyways, love you all. Until next time.